Hey everyone, my name is Anthony, your DDI engineer. Last video, I installed Blue Cat Address Manager 9.4 within the VMware Workstation Hypervisor. And what we did was we installed the ISO, we ran the installation, and then we completed, we, we set up the, the um, we added the license to the BAM, the temporary license, and then we added, we configured the interface ETH zero with an IP address, and then the and then we set up the gateway in that in that specific order for a reason. So license first, interface, then gateway, and then the last thing we did was we set up um, we specified some name servers. Not a requirement, especially in your lab environment, but I uh, just like to but wanted to show you how to do that. So once we did that, we entered the IP address of the interface that we set and we were within the browser and we were able to access the GUI. And again, uh, within the GUI, uh, first time logging in, the default username and password was admin. So once we logged into the GUI, the last step we took before um, we ended the video was we created a configuration. And the reason why we created configuration uh, at least in the previous video, is for the purpose of being able to access the multiple tabs that were disabled. So those tabs are not accessible, the DNS and DHCP tabs, until you create a configuration. And in a later video, I'll explain why that is. In this video, we're going to set up a BDDS, almost exactly the same steps to configure um, a BDS similar to the BAM. Again, we need to license it. We need to set up the interface. We need to set up the gateway. And then from there, we'll be able to add the BDDS, which is uh, an acronym for Blue Cat DNS DHCP server. We'll be able to add that into the Blue Cat address manager, the BAM. And then from there, once it's managed, we'll be able to assign it roles. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do. Um, again, I've already set it up, but again, like I, like I said, I'm going to show you um, why, the fact that it's almost exactly the same config, other than the IP address is going to be different. All right, so let's let's get started. So create a new virtual machine, custom, I go to next, installer, browse, Okay, the ISO I'm going to be using is labeled BDDS underscore installer underscore 9.4.0 dash 674.ga. Next, the guest operating system on the BDDS is Linux and the version is Ubuntu. Next, I call this BDDS2. Next, does this doesn't really matter. This is a lab environment. And you don't need much in terms of memory. We can even set that down to uh, two gigs of memory. It does not, the OS itself uses around a gig. So giving it an additional gig is, is usually good enough, especially if you're going to run just a few queries. NAT, LSI logic, recommended SCSI controller. SCSI recommended, and then create a new virtual machine. And if you look at the release notes, the maximum, or sorry, the minimum disk size should be 180. Again, look at the release notes for the BDDS to confirm the requirements as they can change, especially when upgrading to a new version. Store virtual disk as a single file. Next, next, and then finish. So I'm not going to hit finish because I've already set it up. But that's that's all you need to do. Okay. So here's the BDDS. Again, all um the what you didn't see is that once I hit finish, there's a prompt that says, "Would you like to uh, install a Proteus?" And or sorry, not Proteus, uh, Adonis, and, which is an old uh, uh, name for the BDDS, which is part of the integrity product now. 
And then once it's completed the installation, it'll ask to restart. And then this is the, or actually, sorry, let me, let me, let me exit out of here. This is the window you will see. And you can see here, this is version 9.4. So again, because I'm using an ISO, the username and password is root. Okay, I've logged in. And let me see if I can actually make this a little bigger. And if I can't, I can't recall exactly where it is. Not a big deal. Okay. Not a big deal. You should be able to see the screen. All right. So again, the first thing I want to do is license it. Now on this BDDS, the only thing I have done is license it. But again, I will show you exactly where to do that. So we want to log in as admin. So I'm going to type in SU space admin. Okay. And you can see here it has a prompt at Adonis, which is the name for the BDDS. And then I'm going to type in configure tab. If I tab again, I'm going to select interface or sorry, license, configure license, enter. If I tab it, select update. So update is to either add a license to the BDDS or update um, the license. So if you're, for example, if your license license expires or this is a temporary license this is what you would do to update the license okay and always select interactively and then once you hit enter it will go through the prompt um, to enter the client id and the uh, license information once a valid license has been added you'll be able to uh, configure um, or sorry, you'll be able to configure this no matter what. If you, so for example, let's say you, you skip the licensing uh, piece first, then you will start getting a, a message automatically saying you need, to, you need to apply a license and that's going to interrupt other things that you're doing. It doesn't stop you from configuring other things though. But I'm going to skip that step. Again, um, this has already been licensed. When I want to go back, I'm going to type in exit, enter, Again, I'm going to type in configure and tabbing. And this next step is the interface. So I'm going to select interface, enter, tab. I'm going to, now I have not set the IP address uh, for this interface. So I'm going to type in modify. I tab it automatically ETH zero appears. I'm going to hit enter and I tab it again. If I type in show, you'll see that this is the default address that's at, um, that exists um, if you have not added an IP address yet. So what I'm going to do is type in set of the options. I'm going to select address, and then I'm going to enter the IP address. Now I'm going to enter an IP address that's within the same subnet mask as the BAM. So 192.168.245. The BAM is dot three. I'm going to set this as dot four. Again, I'm going to put this, uh, and then I need to put slash 24. Again, if you just enter the IP address without specifying the subnet mask, then uh, it will give you a, a error as so, syntax error specifically. So this is a slash 24, enter, and then I'm going to type in save. It says saved interface successfully. I'll type in show. As you can see, the IP address has been changed for ETH zero. The next step is I need to set the gateway. So I'm gonna go back by typing exit. Okay, and then I'm at the interfaces um, configuration. I'm gonna go back again, exit. All right, and then I'm gonna type in configure. And then I'm gonna to go to network to set the gateway. Tab, enter. If I tab again, I type in show, I can see there is no gateway configured. I'm gonna type in set, tab, automatically default dash gateway appears, and I'm going to enter the gateway. Which is dot two. Okay, enter, and then type in save again. 
and it has successfully been saved. I type in show, I can see the gateway is set properly. And then that is that is all we need to do. Um, actually, just just for uh, just to show, just similar to what I did in the BAM, I'm going to also configure the um, the DNS server. Or sorry, um, set up the um, um, set up the name a server config on these BDDSs. So I go to configure. I'm going to select name servers, name server. Enter tab. If I type in show, there's nothing set for name servers. I'm going to select add. I'm going to have three different options. I can add an address, a domain name, or a full, fully qualified domain name, and or a search domain. I could add all three if I wanted to as well. So similar to what I did in Blue Cat Address, or sorry, in the BAM, Blue Cat Address Manager. I'm just going to enter some uh, random external DNS server 8.8.8.8. Oh, sorry. Add and then address 8.8.8.8. Save, show. You can see I have that IP address. And we'll just add the other address as well 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Save, show. Okay, so I have two name servers configured for redundancy purposes. All right, so I am done. So I'm gonna hit exit, exit again. Okay, and then exit one more time because I can get out of there now. Okay, so next step is we're gonna log into the Blue Cat Address Manager via the GUI and we will add the BDDS to the BAM so it can start managing the server. All right, so I'm going to log into the Blue Cat Address Manager via the GUI. Dot three, perfect. As you can see here, I'm in the GUI now. The only username that exists until I start adding users or authenticators is username admin, password is admin, everything is lowercase. Enter. All right, I've logged in. I'm in version 9.4. As you can see, we have the default config that we set up in the initial video. Once we create created this configuration, we're, we're able to access the tabs that were not available initially. So IP space, DNS devices. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to the servers tab. And this under the servers tab is where you would manage all of your servers and where you would also add servers that are not managed by Blue Cat Address Manager. And I'll talk more about that in another video. So to add a BDDS, a Blue Cat DNS DHB server, um, which you would like to be managed by the Blue Cat Address Manager, which is what you see here, we're gonna go to the plus sign where you see it says new, and then we're gonna select server, add a new server. In the profile section, we have lots of options. Uh, we, we also have some legacy servers listed here. You, you know it's legacy when it says Adonis, <laughs> especially um, XMB2, I believe, is one of the oldest servers from this list. So for the purpose of a lab, um, what we want to do is we want to we use the same profile, especially when we're setting up um, XHA or uh, DHB failover, it, it becomes important in those particular configurations. For So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a Blue Cat DNS uh, DHCP server slash 45. It really doesn't matter which ones you select. Um, the differences really are um, based on your licensing. Um, you, for, for example, the BDS 25, I don't recall exactly the, the maximum amount of RAM that you can add to a BDDS25, but let's say it's 16 gigs. And that's really all it is. By selecting this BDDS25 and then later on, or, or when you created the BDDS25, you added the 16 gigs, it helps you understand which servers are running 
or utilizing um, certain resources. In most cases, though, or in a lot of cases, um, a, a lot of the BDDS, the BDDSs will be similar in terms of the profile, but that really, again, depends on your environment. Again, I'm going to select the BDDS 45. Okay, and the name I, I use is a name um, you can, you'll be able to reference within the BAM GUI. Okay, it is not the name of the fully qualified domain name that you can resolve against, but it can be. So I'm going to call this DNS, um, DNS server, the management interface, and the name doesn't have to be a fully qualified domain name. It could be any name you like. The management interface is the interface or the IP address I set up for ETH0. So that IP address is 192.168.245.4. Now the host name is the fully qualified domain name. I um, mean, you can set it to whatever whatever you like. Um, in, in a lot of cases, it's pro it, it probably makes sense. Again, this is a lab, but in production, it probably makes sense to have the name and the host name having similar names. So, I'm going to call it the same thing, DNS server, but it has to be a full qualified, fully qualified domain name, .abc.com. Okay. And we can see here that connect to server is automatically checked and we'll keep it that way. Upgrade to latest version. 99% of the time, we should not select this when adding a new server. Um, there are cases where I guess it would make sense to select it, but in most cases, I wouldn't suggest selecting upgrade to latest version. And I'll go more in detail when we talk about upgrading our BAM and BDDSs and best practices. Now, the password is a deployment password, and that password is Lucat, all lowercase, as you can see. Okay, and I wouldn't suggest changing this password. It is it is a deployment. This is a a password used for deployments only. It's not used for anything else. And then you can also set location of where the BDDS is um, located, if you like. Oh, no, I didn't select that, but now now I need to select it. I'll select Canada. All right, now once you enter all this information, okay, before, before you enter any additional information here, we wanna select detect service settings. If you do not select detect service settings and you hit the add button, you will not be able to add this server to the BAM. So let's do that first. Okay, so Invalid host name, great. I love error messages. Invalid host name. So it probably doesn't like the underscore. And in the name, I believe I can use spaces. So let's call it DNS server. Okay, let's see if that's okay. Detect server settings. Invalid host name. Again, it may not like the underscore, and that is fine. So I'll remove the underscore for both. Detect server settings. Third time's a charm. Beautiful. So we have a green mark here. It says Blue Cat DNS DHTP server version IDA4, dedicated management disabled. What what we want we, what we want to see is this green uh, check here. Um, so that means everything's okay. That means that the server is able to, or sorry, the BAM is able to communicate with the BDDS and everything is great. Um, there are other error messages that can appear. Um, and the, the most uh, common error message is that it's not able to communicate with the server. And that could, be, that could be because of multiple different reasons and we'll go through it, but it can be, it could be that uh, this DNS or DHCP server was managed previously and you have to remove it out of Proteus control. I'll explain what that is again in another video. Um, it could also mean that there's a communication issue. So it's unable to, talk to it, it may be on a different network, firewall, multiple different things. And we can go into detail about that. We will go into detail about that in a, in a future video. But for now, we have a green light so we can go forward. 
So uh, this is virtual. Um, everything here we can skip. Um, there is the option of an X XHA backbone. I'm going to skip this for now. Um, we will start, um, we, it's, this is especially important when we have a physical server. Uh, when it comes to a virtual environment, uh, we can skip this and we'll really skip everything here. We can talk more about these different options um, later on in a future video, but this is all we need to do to add the server. So I'm going to hit add. So once it's done loading and added, we'll be able to see it in the servers tab. And from there, we can start managing it. Um, and in, in, future videos i'm going to show you more show you all the different options that you can you can set on the bdds different um, log files that you can access both um, within the gui as well within the cli so that's my video for today in my next videos we're going to start patching these servers and upgrading the servers to the latest version we're also going to add roles. So we're going to add DNS and DHP roles and different configurations like XHA and DHP failover. Thank you for watching my video and have a great day.